In this presentation, we will create an amortization table for the effective method of amortizing a bond discount. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Our information will be on the left side. We'll put the table into uh, this table, the data into this table. And then we'll calculate a couple different uh, journal entries related to this information and post them to a worksheet so that we can see what the effect is. What, how would we actually use this table in context? So if we go back to the, to the left, our data is over here. We have the face amount of the bond, 100,000. Stated rate, that's the rate on the actual bond. And then the market rate, which is the rate on the market. This is not on the actual bond. That's what we assume the market will be semi-annual payments, two-year bond. That means that there's gonna be two years, four time periods because we're gonna pay interest every six months and the issue price is 96,454. The difference between the 100,000 and the 96,454 is gonna be the discount. We're issuing it at a discount. Now that discount can be derived from calculating the present value and the difference between the stated rate and the market rate. So that's what the effect is. Now, because of that, we can use the effective method and these two rates to allocate between the amount of interest and the amount of reduction in the unamortized discount. So let's see this in terms of, of the trial balance, what's on the trial balance at the start and what's gonna happen as we go through this. So when we record the bond first off, we, had it on the, we have it on the books now. We got, a, we got 100,000 or we got cash of the difference between 96,454. Then the bond is on the books for 100,000. That's what we owe at the end. And then we have this discount, which is the carrying amount, the difference between these two, 96,454, the actual money we got now. When we make payments on the bond, we're actually gonna pay cash on the bond, but we're only gonna pay cash based on the stated rate on the bond. And we're gonna have to deal with this discount here some way. That discount needs to go away by the end of this bond. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce this discount and record it to interest expense as the bond goes. Why are we gonna reduce it and record it to interest expense? Because really that difference is due to the difference in interest rates. So we're gonna, we're gonna reduce it to really kind of put that difference between the interest rate, take it from the bond rate to basically the market rate and record the expense as we go. The easiest way to do that is just to take a straight line method, just to take this and divide it by however many payments we have and then, and then allocate it out just like we would in a depreciation type of method on a straight line depreciation. But that's not exactly right because it should change with the carrying value of, of the bond. So, so we should be, just as we do for amortization of a note, we should be figuring out exactly what the, what the carrying amount is and figuring out uh, what the interest portion then should be. Now, if it's in material, it might be easiest and okay to just use the straight line method. Uh, if it's material, then we'd wanna use the effective method, the preferred method. So on a straight line method, all we would do is we would just say, well, here's, here's the unamortized discount, which is just the 100 minus the 96. Here's the carrying amount, which is always gonna be a 100 minus the unamortized amount. And then we would just take this original unamortized amount and divide it by the number of periods, four, two years, two times a year, to get how much we're gonna reduce it by an even amount each time period. And then we would reduce the unamortized discount by that amount. And then the carrying amount would always be the 100 minus the unamortized amount. So if it was straight line, which, which is not the preferred method, but an easy method, right? We would just always have the same amount here. We would reduce the unamortized by the same amount each, each time period. And then the carrying amount would also be uh, changed by the same 
the same amount here. So it always would be the 100 minus the unamortized amount and so on and so forth until we get down to the period four, the last period, where the unamortized amount is zero and we're left with the 100,000, just the bond amount that we can then pay off at the term of the bond. So now we're gonna do that, that same thing but a little bit more complex method, the effective method. And this is a better allocation between, between the interest based on the carrying of out in a similar way as a note is when we allocate between interest and principal. So we're gonna start off the same here. We're gonna say that the, uh, the unamortized discount is the 100 minus the 96,554. The carrying amount will always equal the 100 face amount minus the unamortized discount. Now we gotta break out you know, how much is gonna be allocated to the unamortized discount. To do that, we're gonna calculate the amount of cash that we pay. So when we pay cash, this is actually what we pay on a stated rate basis. So we're taking the 100,000 face amount on the bond times 0.08, that's the rate on the bond. That would be 8,000 a year, but we pay every six months. So we have to divide that by two, 4,000. So the amount that we're actually going to pay each time period will be the same. It's 100,000 times 0.08 divided by 2. So that's the 4,000. And then the bond interest that we're going to have, it's going to be based on the carrying amount. So we're going to say this bond interest is equal to the carrying amount times, and then we're going to multiply it times the market rate. But that's for a year, so we have to divide it by 2. So in other words, we're gonna take the carrying amount, 96,454, kind of like if it was a note, that'd be like the principal. And then we're gonna multiply it times the market rate, the, the, like the real rate, the actual rate on the market, times uh, 0.1, that would be for a year. And then we're gonna divide that by two. So this would be uh, the amount of bond interest, the actual bond interest here. Now, of course, that's greater than, than the cash paid, so the difference, the uh, amortization change we're gonna have is gonna be equal to this 4,823 minus the 4,000. So that's the 823. So then the unamortized discount then is gonna be that difference. So we're gonna say the unamortized discount is gonna go down by that 823. So it's gonna be equal to the 3,546 minus the 823 or the 2,723. And then the carrying amount will always be equal to the 100,000 minus the unamortized discount. So we'll go through this process again. So same thing for the, for the next payment. Again, the payment is always going to be the same. It's always just going to be the 100 times the amount on the bond divided by 2 because it's semi-annual. And then the interest, the bond interest is going to be based on the carrying amount, which of course has now changed. So that's going to equal the carrying amount times the market rate divided by two. And as we can see, these amounts then change. So the amortization amount here is going to be equal to the difference, this number minus this number. And you can see these numbers are changing as opposed to these here. So if we subtract those out then, we're gonna say this is the prior unamortized discount minus the 862, giving us the uh, 1,859. And then the carrying amount will always be the 100,000 minus uh, the unamortized. So we'll do this again. If we do this again, we'll say this equals the payment. We could just say it's the 4,000, it's the same, times the stated rate divided by two Then we'll want to divide it by two. <laughs> and then we'll take the bond interest, which is always going to be the carrying amount, times the market rate divided by two. The difference between those two is going to give us the change for the unamortized. And then we'll take the difference between the unamortized before and the change gives us our unamortized discount. The carrying amount will always be the 100,000 minus the unamortized. One more time. Last payment, we're going to have the 100,000 times the 8% divided by 2. The bond interest 
is going to be the carrying amount times the market rate, 10%, divided by 2. The, uh, amorti the change then is going to be the change, the difference. And then the unamortized amount is going to be the prior unamortized minus this number. And of course, it should go down to zero. That's how we know it's, it's working. And then we're going to say that the carrying amount will always be the 100 minus the unamortized, which of course is zero. So there we have that. Now you might be saying, is it, what if I had a whole lot of payments? Wouldn't that be a tedious process? We can do this in Excel a lot easier. So let's just take a look at that real quick. After we do the first one, I'm going to delete these and just redo them. So I'm just going to select these and redo them. And let's just copy this row down and see if it does uh, what we think. We can even delete this row. And let's copy this row down and see if it does what we think it should. And if it doesn't, then we'll see if we can fix it to make it just copy down. So I'll select these, we'll, we'll go to the autofill and copy that down. And we say, okay, there's this number looks right. This number, obviously something is wrong. What's wrong with it? This number's right, but then it pulled this down and I want that to stay at the 10%. So I'm gonna have to use an absolute reference there. This number looks right. I mean, it would be right if the, and then this number looks like it's calculating right. And that looks like it's, it's doing something wrong again. It's pulling this number down. So we're gonna have to fix two cells here. So if we delete this, and then I'm going to the, to the bond here, this number, I don't want it to move down. So anything related to these data over here, we don't want it to move, basically. So that means that this is B5. So within B5, I'm gonna put my cursor right in there and put F4 on the keyboard. That makes an absolute reference. You can also just put a dollar sign before the B and a dollar sign before the five. And then when we, when we copy it down, it'll, it'll copy down. Again, that has nothing to do with dollars. It's just a code telling Excel, don't move that cell when we copy it. And then the other one is going to be uh, the carrying amount, which we pulled this number. And again, I don't want it to pull down when we copy down. I don't want it to go down to the 8%. So that B3, I'm going to put my cursor in the B3 and push F4 on the keyboard or you can just type a dollar sign before the B and dollar sign before the three. We only need one dollar sign typically, but two doesn't help, doesn't hurt. Any other, yeah. We'll, have, we'll use an absolute reference. So here we have that and then enter. And then we'll just select these again. And then I'm gonna auto fill down and see if it does what we want. And so this looks reasonable. That looks like right, that looks right, that looks right, that looks right. That looks right. And the check is that it went to zero. And of course, the carrying amount is 100,000. That's where we want to be. Okay, so let's record some of these. What would the journal entry look like? What, what are we actually doing here? Well, if, if we start off on our, our trial balance where we had, we had issued the bond and it's on the books for 100,000 discount here, and then we make our first payment in terms of interest and, um, and the discount, what, what's gonna happen then is we're gonna pay cash so cash is affected, it's going down because we're gonna pay interest. I'm gonna right click and copy, I'm gonna put it on the bottom and Q4, right click and paste one, two, three. How much are we gonna pay? I'm gonna put a negative to do the calculation and we've already done it here, right? We're gonna pay this amount. I'll just pull it from the table. We're gonna pay this amount, which is the 100,000 times the 8% divided by two. And then that's how much we're gonna pay and the debit's gonna to go to interest expense, but we also have to, to decrease this discount at the same time. So we do that typically at the same time. So this is a debit, we need to do the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm gonna right click and copy that. And that's gonna go underneath, right click and paste one, two, three. And we need the credit there, and that's gonna come from our table. So now I'm gonna say negative of this number on the table. That's what the table's for. And then we're going to debit the sum of those two, 800 and 483 with a negative sum or our plug formula. Sum, double click. I'm going to go from the bottom to the top, or you can just move this thing out of the way. And there's that. So our debits now equal the credits. If you add them up, they add up to zero. And that's going to be interest expense. So we're going to put that to interest expense. Even though we only paid 4000 we're allocating this discount amount. So our interest expense is 4,823. Right click and copy. That's gonna go up top. Right click and paste one, two, three. So if we post this, here's the interest expense. Here it is on our trial balance. 
we want to be in the middle column, W12 equals, we'll point to that 4,823, bring the balance up, uh, out of balance now, and the net income goes down by the interest expense, which is revenue minus expenses. That's income, not a loss. Cash is here. Cash will be in W3 equals, point to the cash. That's gonna bring cash down. And then here's the discount. So we're in the discount. So in W7 equals, we'll point to that 823, bringing that discount down. So now if we compare this to our table then, uh, we have a carrying amount on the table of 97,277, uh, unamortized discount 2723 after the first payment. So here's our 2723, and here's this minus this is the 97,277. So then let's do one more payment. So I'll, I'll highlight this one. Now we're on the second one. And it'll be in essence the same journal entry, meaning the accounts will remain the same but the amounts will differ as they do when we pay like a loan off that has an installment payment where we, where we pay interest and principal. So I'm just gonna copy the same uh, accounts here, but then the cash that we're gonna pay, we always pay the 4,000, that doesn't change. The discount, and I'm gonna put a negative of 4,000. The discount, however, is gonna be this amount now. So it's gonna be negative of this amount and that'll change the amount of the expense, which will be the plug of negative sum. I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top, or you can move this out of the way, and enter. So similar, but not exact, just like when we make a loan payment, basically, because it deals with the same issue uh, of this interest on the, being based on the, on the uh, carrying amount. So we're gonna say, there's the, the bond interest. I'm gonna double click on the bond interest expense to go there, go to the end of it, plus, 4,864 brings that up out of balance brings net income down cash is here something's in it so I'm going to double click on cash go to the end of it and plus point to that 4,000 bringing this balance down and then the bond discount is here here's the bond uh, the, the bond uh, discount double click on it go to the end of it and plus and we're going to point to that 864 and enter so now we have this amount and this being the care, the bond amount. <laughs> so if we go to our table, here's the unamortized amount, here's the carrying amount. And if we go back over to our, uh, our numbers, here's the unamortized amount, which matches of course, and the carrying amount being the difference between these two, which is 98,141, 98,141.